So here's our first set of notes that I'm doing for you on feeding and digestion. So first, let's go for an overview. Um, we're going to talk about intracellular versus extracellular digestion, one-way versus two-way digestion, the basics of heterotrophs and all the different feeding types that go with it, and then symbionts, oh, and I forgot one, the teeth types. So here we go. The first is intracellular digestion. This was one of your vocabulary terms. It's where digestion um, takes place or the breakdown of substances within the cytoplasm of the cell. So like the filter feeders, um, like a sponge, they have specialized cells that actually take care of the breakdown of food for them. They have no mouth parts. The next type is extracellular digestion. This could be from the fungus, which of course are not animals, that secrete enzymes right onto their food to start digesting it, or larger animals like this rabbit here, or us, where we actually chew our food and then secrete enzymes um, from our saliva and even from our stomachs to start the digestion outside of the cell. Another one of your vocab terms. Okay. Then we get to the different types of digestion. So this might be a little bit confusing, but hang in there with me. A two-way digestive system are found in organisms that only have, sorry, that should be have, one opening. Okay, And this is usually a gastrovascular cavity. This is kind of uh, disgusting, I guess, um, from our perspective. So there's a single opening, which is the mouth and the anus at the same time. So water and food goes in through the mouth into the gastrovascular cavity, which is just a big open space for digestion to take place. And then the waste products come right back out that single opening. Aren't you glad that we don't have that? And then we have the one-way digestion. And just like it says, things go one way. Now, yes, animals do throw up and have issues like that. But in the most part, food is supposed to only move one way through our digestive tract. Okay, so because food is moving one way, there are two openings. Okay, Food goes in the mouth, just like this rhino eating, and comes out the anus or anal pore. Okay, so we've learned about how animals digest so far. Okay, now let's talk about the different kinds of feeding types. A heterotroph is any organism that cannot make its own food and must consume other organisms. So that's all of the animal kingdom and also the fungus. The plants are autotrophs, which means they make their own food. Okay, here are the different types of heterotrophs. You'll recognize a lot of them from previous studies and also from your vocabulary. We have filter feeders, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, parasites, detritivores, and decomposers, which are fungus and, of course, not animals. I will go through each of these, so it's up to you whether you wanted to pause and write down the basics or if you want to wait until we go through each one independently. Okay, so filter feeders, they're our first ones, and they strain food from the water. Mostly they're consuming algae and other small animals. So if it's a sponge, it's consuming algae and very, very, very tiny uh, other animals like plankton. Okay, They can range in size and complexity from a small sponge that can only be a couple uh, millimeters or centimeters to a very large whale. Sponges have special cells that have little tails or flagella on them to help trap the food, and then it's digested um, intracellularly inside of them. Clams, they have gills to help filter out organisms, so they just sit there and have their food kind of come to them. And then whale sharks or blue whales can actually use these uh, teeth-like baleen plates that help strain the organisms while they're swimming, so a little bit more active of a filter feeder. This used to be a video, but it's no longer available. But you can look up a video of a blue whale eating. It's pretty cool. Their mouths are huge. They can open to over 18 feet. Okay, the next group of organisms are the detritivores. 
Detritus is decaying bits of plant and animal material. So the detritivore consumes this decaying stuff. Earthworms are one of the primary ones that we're more familiar with. They consume all of the decaying material in the soil. So the decaying uh, material goes in and actually a substance kind of like soil comes out. So that's the um, worm poop, so to speak. Crustaceans are also detritivores, so things like lobsters and um, shrimp, they eat the food along the ocean bottom. Okay, now for the carnivores, the ones that we know very well. Carnivores, of course, eat other animals, they eat meat, and they use specialized structures like teeth, claws, their speed, and hunting to go after their prey. They have sharp canines for piercing, gripping, and tearing, and we'll go over the teeth types in a little bit. They have molars and premolars that have sharp edges for slicing and dicing, and their jaws move up and down with minimal side-to-side -side motion. Again, we'll cover that. I'll show you a picture of a skull in a little bit. Another thing about carnivores is they don't have digestive enzymes in their saliva. Excuse me. And their stomach digestive acids are about 10 times stronger than our, um, an omnivore or an herbivore, having a lower pH. They also have shorter and smoother intestines. This allows the food to move through very quickly because you don't want meat or flesh to sit around in your intestines because it can bring bacteria with it. Okay, Moving on, the herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat plant material. Their canines are usually less pointed they have incisors, which are the front teeth for chisel-like cutting and gnawing. They have molars and premolars that are broad and flat that helps grind. So think about eating salad or um, things like that. They can have side-to-side -side movement of the jaw. And of course, unlike the carnivores, they have long intestines. Plants have cellulose inside of them, and it takes a long time for our intestines to digest cellulose. So the um, digestive tract of an herbivore needs to be in, um, extremely long. Some herb herbivores even have multiple stomach-like compartments in order to deal with that. Okay, That's the extra pouch-like extensions or sometimes called rumen. Okay. Animals like herbivores that have to eat plant material often use bacteria to break down plant material. When you're using bacteria to break down plant material, bacteria produce stinky substances, um, you know, so otherwise known as gas. Okay, and then we get to the omnivores. They're kind of in the middle between the carnivores and the herbivores. They eat both plants and animals, like this bear. Look at that awesome teeth. Okay, they have a combination of sharp and flat teeth. So we've got some sharp canines here and then molars in the back, just like us. Their jaw moves up to up and down, excuse me, and also side to side for chewing. And they have a medium length digestive tract. So not as long just for eating plant material, but not as short as a carnivore um, because they do eat some plants. Okay. The next type of feeders, we're going to call this uh, symbiosis, and there's different kinds of symbiosis. Symbiosis is a close and often long-term interaction or relationship between organisms. And there, like I said, there's three different types. The first type is commensalism, where one organism benefits and the other organism is not helped or harmed. Um, then there's mutualism. So, I'm sorry, commensalism is here with this picture. So, the hermit crab benefits from the shell of this um, animal that's not hurt or harmed. Mutualism up here with the clownfish, where they're both benefiting, the clownfish um, is getting a place, a safe place to live, and the anemone is getting some food scraps. And then finally, there's parasitism, where one organism benefits, but it's at the expense of the other. So the other is harmed, like those nasty parasites we saw in the video, the tapeworms. Okay, so a little bit more on the parasites. Parasites feed off of a host organism, usually through absorption um, in the intestines or the bloodstream. They have specialized mouth parts like suckers and hooks for piercing and grabbing on 
to um, our intestines and other body parts and most of the time they absorb nutrients through the skin. Here are some of those creeping nematodes and then here's some nematodes that are burrowing into uh, some flesh. Okay. The final part of our notes today is on the skull and teeth types. So the basic feeding types of animals are shown in their dentition. Of course there are different um, or exceptions to the rules, but we're going to go over some of the basic rules. And I talked about them a little bit in each of the different feeding types, but I want to show you some of the different skulls. Okay, so an herbivore skull, like in this horse here, has no or reduced canines. So here you don't see any canines in this horse. Down here, very reduced little tiny canines in this animal. They have very large molars and premolars, all of these right here, with flat, broad surfaces. Okay, These are good for grinding and chewing. And then they have larger incisors. So here's the incisors right here on this skull, and the horses are right here. Okay. These help them to snip food off of the plant that they're consuming. Their jaw moves mostly side to side. If you've ever watched um, a, a horse eat or a cow eat, they often chew like that, right? You've seen some people chew their gum like that too, I'm sure. Okay, and they do chew their food. Okay, the carnivores. Carnivores have large canines, very large, sharp canines. Okay. Their incisors are reduced or lacking sometimes all together, but these are reduced and they're usually also sharp. Their molars are sharp and not flat. So we see just a presence of sharp teeth. These are good for ripping. Their jaws move up and down and so they don't chew their food. I know sometimes we make fun of our dogs like, aren't you going to chew that? Um, but they really can't. That's not a function that they have. So. Um, for them to just like swallow their food, they're doing what their skull um, dictates that they should do. Okay, and then there's us and the uh, some of the other organisms like bears and gorillas, and we're omnivores. We have a combination of teeth types. There are some incisors that are a little bit bigger than in the um, carnivores, but definitely smaller than in herbivore. We have um, sometimes larger canines, sometimes not quite so large. This is a gorilla, so obviously really big canines for protection. And then flattened broad molars that, again, are not as big as an herbivore, but um, definitely flat and not sharp like a carnivore. Our jaws move up and down, and also some side-to-side -side movement. So we can rip, snip, and chew our food. So we should actually be chewing our food, not swallowing it. And then in the animal kingdom, there are some other kinds of mouth parts that um, sometimes don't really get as much recognition because they're not found in a skull. So there's needle-like or tube-like, like this butterfly has a tube-like for sucking or flies. This um, organism has a needle-like mouth part. It's injecting it into this little um, grub, this worm here, and it's sucking out the nutrients from it, or like a mosquito that would suck blood. And then we've got the grasshopper here with some chewing mouth parts, but not teeth. So we don't see a skull, but we see movable mouth parts. And then you have something like the anemone or a jellyfish that doesn't even have a true mouth um, or mouth parts, but it does have an opening where the food goes in. So I hope you've learned a little bit about the different types of feeding and digestion and mouth parts in animals. Please make sure to ask me if you have any other questions. Thank you.